This video is sponsored by Trico Republic, the precious metals experts. Talk to one of their experts today about diversifying your portfolio to help assure your future financial security. Find their contact information in the description below and pinned in our first comment. James Kaufman, World News Report today, April 30th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had three M-Class solar flares today. I believe they were all generated by the same sunspot, but we'll have to prove the last one ourselves. We started the day off with an M1.6 solar flare just after 0 hundred UTC time. That was a bit of a long-term event. That was just followed over the last two hours by two additional M-Class solar flares. First off, around 1530 UTC time, we had an M1.2 class solar flare, and that was followed up by an M1.3 class solar flare right about 1620 UTC time. You can see that the two M solar flares make an M shape as well. Now it looks like all three of these M class solar flares were generated from Sunspot Group AR3654, the only complex Sunspot Group we have that is Earth facing. Although it looks like it is becoming less complex as it moves towards our limb. So, as usual, we're running a C plus baseline. A C flare is happening at all times, as far as Earth's concerned. And that has not dropped back to B level in some time period. Now, today we only had a 5% chance of an X class solar flare, according to Space Weather Live, who gets their information directly from NOAA. We had a 35% chance of an M class solar flare. You can make that 100% just after 0, 0100 today. Now, the M1.64 that you see here, the 24 hour max, is the one that occurred at 0, 0146 here and ended at 131 UTC time. That came from AR3654, but you can see that instead of being Alpha, Beta, Delta, Gamma, now, as it became less complex, just after 0, 0100 UTC time, it actually spewed off an M1.6 solar flare. Uh, it again was Alpha, Beta, Delta, Gamma. Now it's Alpha, Beta, Gamma. It seems to be less complex as it moves towards the limb. Now, moving on, they did cover the first of the two M flares that we've just had. Uh, you can see that it's also from AR3654, as all of them are, although the one that's marked C1.4 may have been from a filament eruption based on what they have here. I have not reviewed that. Now we are waiting for them and NOAA to assign that last solar flare, unless it was a filament eruption, to a sunspot group. But we're going to go over to SO's ultraviolet imager, at 195 angstroms and find it for ourselves. Now something went really wrong. These are the flares here and goes ultraviolet imager looked like it got pounded by something or kicked around in the studio. Again here are the M flares both of them one two but then as soon as that occurs something happens to our satellite. I have no idea what's going on here. It might have been a direct impact. Those are over on the far limb and we're usually affected by solar flares because of our geomagnetic connection to that limb when they pop off over on the far, uh, well, parting limb. All right, moving over to NOAA's absorption prediction center, D level absorption prediction center we see that we have radiation hitting the entire planet as discussed running a c plus baseline so we're constantly being hit by a c flare and there's the first of 
well, the second of the three M flares that we've had today. This is going to be the M 1.2 solar flare. It happened mostly over the Atlantic, some parts of South America, and maybe the Lesser Antilles. That was followed up by an M 1.3 solar flare. And that nailed the Caribbean, some of Florida, some of the Central America, and the, well, Colombia, Venezuela, parts of South America. And again, everyone got their dose of C flare or X ray energy all day long. And remember, we talked about X rays being dangerous to all living cells. All right, over to Lasco C3. I'm going to start the day over. I do see some plasma being generated right there. Is that, let's see. And that could have been the 1600 UTC eruption. This plasma could have been from the 0 hundred. And that one could have been from the 1600 or both that one and the other one. This would be more 3654 here. I'm not quite sure what sunspot is in the northern hemisphere here but this plasma looks like it could have been generated by that first m 1.64 solar flare that happened right after 0 hundred utc time i don't really see the plasma signature i was looking for coming out of that same general area from that same sunspot now there is a chance that that flare that just popped off right there uh, on the two o'clock position, if you will, is from another sunspot group, and that's the one that has not been named yet, the M1.6 solar flare that we saw hit Venezuela, Colombia, the, well, northern parts of South America and the Caribbean. This has been very useless tool lately. It used to be very useful. This is Lasco C3. And I believe this, when it turns black here, this is an impact on the camera. And yes, even explosions that go the other direction can impact our camera via geomagnetic rope connection. Now, I know all of you guys know that we're actually connected via electricity to our sun that's pulling us away from the Big Bang at 544,000 miles an hour. This being the sun coming right at you. We're also orbiting our sun at around 67,000 miles an hour, one time each year. That's what makes up a year. Now, we also know that an explosion, even in the other direction, could affect Earth because of this geomagnetic or electric connection we have to our star that we are orbiting and with in the atmosphere of and atmosphere might be the wrong word there we might say within the solar system of so let's continue nasa had a no-go called off this first cme that was supposed to hit us on the 24th 5th 26th 27th finally they called it off yesterday but they do have plasma hitting earth on the looks like the fourth or fifth Boy, guys, they can forecast this stuff seven days off. And I thought plasma moved at a thousand plus kilometers per second. At least it used to, as far as I can remember. So what do we have here? We have plasma inbound for the fourth, perhaps. Not quite sure what would have caused that. It doesn't look like they modeled any of the three M flares, including the M1.6. It looks like it definitely generated a coronal mass ejection right around 0 hundred UTC time. All right, taking a quick look on HMI Intensigram here, we see that really we only have five sunspots Earth facing here on our solar disk. We have 3654, 3655, 3662, 3663, and 3661. Although we also know that we have some large sunspot groups coming around the limb and will probably be named either today or sometime early tomorrow. All right, quick look, STO, HMI, magnetogram. 
This was taken very recently, so this is just about exactly where everything is, and you can see what looks like a reverse polarity sunspot, white over black, coming around the limb here. This is the one uh, of the sunspots I have warned you about several times. It is enormous, and we can, well, see AR3654 as well here. It looks fearsome still, and we know that if it goes off big time, although it's less complex, while it's over on this side of the limb, where our geomagnetic rope connection is, we could definitely be affected by any of the explosions it generates. Now, I wanted to let y'all know we're seeing no space weather, including solar winds or plasma on our KP indexes or any of our satellites, so all is clear as far as current space weather. This is SOHO at 284 angstroms. You can see AR3654 over here on the limb trying to depart. We can also see the sunspots that I've mentioned that look ferocious coming around the limb that have not yet been named. So this was taken at 514 central time here this morning. We've got some pictures coming in at some strange times. With that said, God bless each and every one of you guys. Please share, subscribe, and always remember that anything's possible in Bizarro World.